Good afternoon, Alex Lafayette. Police have confirmed that one person has been shot. Now, I'm going to give you an idea of what the scene looks like here. There is an armed suspect in a home off Railroad Street. One project after another after another. It's hard to escape construction in Lafayette. And while it's a headache for drivers, city leaders say these projects are actually a sign that the city continues to move forward. The victim noticed she was being tailgated when she looked in her rear view mirror. She was then run off the road and robbed at gunpoint. Drowning is the number one cause of death for children one to four years old. It only takes seconds for a child to fall in and die. Which is why parents are being reminded to keep a close eye on their little one. Nearly 27 million Americans fell victim to phone scams last year. They lost a combined $7 billion. And the attorney general says the problem isn't going away. It's actually getting worse. As a mom, do you think that this is something that you'll ever fully heal from after losing a child? Oh, gosh, Krista, that's a hard question. A hard question. In part two, I sit down with several other families from our community and hear their stories of life after their loss. Here's a look at what I'm working on for tomorrow. How do you get by after losing a child. It's uh, only by the faith that you walk. Very few details are known at this time, but what we can tell you is that the initial call came in at about 940 this morning when two men walked into this Salem Bank here in Flora. Good morning, Alex. We're back here at Arnie's to celebrate its 50th anniversary today. A few minutes ago, I was put to the test. I made an Arnie's pizza. Brad, what did you think about? How did I do? Not bad. Okay. Are you going to join me for a piece? Absolutely. Let's, let's taste this. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. News 18's Krista Henry is live at the banquet hall right now. She joins us with details of Cruz's first Indiana appearance. Krista? Well, good afternoon, Jeff and Gina. Yes, yeah, several people already making their way into uh, the banquet facility here where the GOP spring dinner is expected to start at 6.30. Now, this comes just a day after Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump made a stop in Indianapolis. We're told that Governor Mike Pence and Senator Ted Cruz are wrapping up their one-on-one -on -one meeting at the governor's mansion right now before heading to Primo's Banquet Center. Nearly 90 Vietnam veterans are welcomed home with open arms decades after returning from war. It was all part of Indiana's first yellow ribbon honor flight out of Lafayette. I had the honor of joining the veterans and it was certainly an emotional day as mm -hmm. anyone could imagine. For some of these heroes though, even camouflage couldn't hide the tears. The day started before sunrise. Good morning sir, how are you? Very good, how are you? It was time for 88 Vietnam War veterans to board Lafayette's 11th honor flight to our nation's capital. If you look out either side, you'll see a nice show. Many didn't know what to expect, but that feeling of uncertainty soon changed. Now that I'm here, I, I cannot explain it. This was more than a magical experience. All I can say is it's overwhelming. Strangers lined the terminal and cheered on our heroes as they landed in Washington, D.C. I don't even know where they're from. And they're shaking your hands, patting you on the back. Thank you, sister. They don't make them like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Nor like him. <laughs> that was the experience that we never got. Monday's honor flight was different, though. It marked the first yellow ribbon honor flight in Indiana. The mission? To honor all Vietnam veterans with a long overdue welcome home. When we come back in the 60s, there wasn't nobody waiting on us. Nobody. Nobody was there. You were yelled at, and uh, their fish shook at you, and it was just terrible. The day was full of visits to several monuments, starting at the Lincoln Memorial, where the men took a group picture. From there, it was time to make a stop at the Vietnam Memorial Wall. I saw all these guys coming back with bullet wounds and them all burn up. And the morgue is full every month, month, Monday. Let's bring them back some memories. But Monday wasn't only a day for these heroes to be honored and to remember those who never made it home. It was also a day for some to declare a new sense of freedom freedom within their hearts. Years ago we had to hold everything in and now 
just because we're men, we don't, we don't have to hold our emotions anymore. The day ended with a stop to witness the changing of the guard. And with full hearts, it was then time for these heroes to return home, this time overflowing with joy from new memories of one last mission. special trip yes not only for the veterans but for the people who get to go with them yes exactly and that's what I really want to encourage everyone even if you don't know a veteran um, certainly you have the opportunity to go as a guardian and mm -hmm. I'm telling you it will change your life just so much emotion yeah. and um, just a humbling experience and they look at you you look at them and then it's over within seconds it's a train conductor's worst nightmare. <laughs> Seeing a car in their path and not being able to do anything about it. We don't have control over being able to stop or swerve. It's going to take us approximately a mile to stop. It's kind of like a car driving over, over a soda can. It smashes that soda can. And that's pretty much what the train does with the car. The conductor we talked to for this story asked to remain anonymous because of pending litigation. He's been involved in four fatal crashes. He says all of them were unavoidable. The first one, the kid slid on ice and went right in front of us. And then the second one, she just she looked like she was going to stop and just kept rolling. The third one. He ran behind the train that cleared and then we were coming on the other main. It eats at you because you feel you're kind of the last person that saw that individual before the accident. According to the Indiana Department of Transportation, there are nearly 8,000 railroad crossings in Indiana. Nearly 6,000 of those crossings intersect with public roads. The rest are considered private crossings and are located on private properties like farm fields. According to the Federal Railroad Administration, Tippecanoe County alone has 170 crossings. In the past 10 years, more than 60 accidents have occurred on the tracks in Tippecanoe County. Of the nearly 6,000 public crossings in the state, 30% have flashing lights and gates. About 23% have flashing lights only. The remaining 48% have stop signs plus cross bucks, cross bucks only, or just a simple sign. But who decides which safety feature goes at which crossing? According to Debbie Calder at INDOT, she says they evaluate the crossings every year and then make those decisions based off certain characteristics the amount of vehicle and train traffic at that crossing, the speed of the trains and the speed of the traffic, the crash history at that location. Kelder says they then make upgrades with federal funds through the Highway Rail Crossings Program, commonly known as Section 130. About $7 million is distributed to upgrade 20 to 25 crossings every year in the state. That goes to upgrade the most hazardous public highway crossings, which are identified with uh, federal highway assistance. Once upgrades are made, Calder says railroad companies assume responsibility for maintaining the tracks. But even with safety precautions in place, the conductor we spoke to says he often sees people in a hurry and disregard the measures altogether. I think it's the day and age where we're all worried about where we're going and how fast we got to get there. Take a look at this video taken in Tippecanoe County that a viewer sent us. The cross bucks are down and lights are flashing, yet 12 cars go through this intersection. According to Indiana law, drivers are required to remain stopped until the train passes. In instances like this where we were told there was a malfunction, the law still requires drivers to find a different route or remain stopped until they're directed by emergency personnel. Take your time because it's two minutes or your life or it's not going to be a life at all. 